a brief introduction of randomized algorithms okay, followed by global min cut problem. The next one is a very elegant popular Cargus min cut randomized algorithm. Okay. Then a proper analysis of that algorithm. What happens if you run the algorithm so many times? We will analyze that one. Then based on that one, the next development is a fast min cut algorithm that is also due to Carger which will reduce the computational complexity. Then finally, some applications of this min cut problem and I will conclude that session. Okay. What is a deterministic algorithm which is very much familiar to you? It is an algorithm which receives some input, execute the steps and then finally produce an output. So, if I run a deterministic algorithm for example, matrix multiplication algorithm okay, 20 times all the 20 times I will be giving the same input. What will be the output? Always the same output. Okay. But see what happens to the randomized algorithms. Along with the input data, you give a stream of random numbers as additional input. So, the behavior of the algorithm is controlled by the random numbers, not by the input, it is controlled by the random numbers. So, it produces some output. Now, repeat this example, if I run a randomized algorithm 20 times with the same input, what about the output? It need not be the same. Okay. So, what is a randomized algorithm? Randomized algorithm is a one that receives a stream of random numbers along with the input data and makes random choices during execution of the algorithm. Okay. So, which step is to be executed is decided by the random number. The behavior of the algorithm is totally controlled by the random numbers. So, even for a fixed input, different runs of the same algorithm may produce different output. Okay. So, what is the main difference? Additional input is the random numbers. Okay. Next one is deterministic always produces the same answer on the same input, but randomized algorithms may produce different output for the same input if you run the algorithm so many times. What is the motivation for randomized algorithms? You are having lot of deterministic algorithms, then what is the need for randomized algorithm or the motivation for randomized algorithm is? It is very simple to design randomized algorithms and even very simple to implement randomized algorithms okay? and the performance is really high. Okay. You can reduce the computational complexity, space complexity, etc. So, the performance of the algorithm is really high. Then highly suitable for online algorithms. Okay. Can you mention one of online problem? Have you heard of online paging problem? Yes. Okay. So, for that paging problem also there is a nice randomized algorithm. Okay. Highly suitable for online pro algorithms and also highly suitable for parallel and distributed computing. Okay. And for many hard problems, you can obtain better complexity bounds by using randomized algorithms. You have learned NP hard, NP complete problems. Okay. So, always see when you stick on to randomized algorithms, we stick on to polynomial time algorithms. Otherwise, there is no use. You are having a deterministic algorithm which runs in exponential order time, but if I apply randomization, I will be expecting a polynomial time algorithm. <coughs> if I get again an exponential order algorithm, that is of no use. So, always we will stick on to polynomial time algorithms. Okay? Now, once you design an algorithm, you have to check the correctness of the algorithm. Okay? Now, when you consider the randomized algorithms, since the different runs of the algorithm on the same input produce different outputs, it may or may not produce the correct answer. Okay. When you run the algorithm once, you may get the correct answer or you may not get the correct answer. Okay. So, next comes analysis. Normally, analysis means analysis of time complexity and the space requirement. Am I correct? Here when you consider the analysis, see 
there is a class of algorithms which may or may not produce the correct answer. So, in that case I have to find out the probability of success. What do you mean by probability of success? What is the probability of getting the correct answer? Correct. Without doing that one just like that if you implement the algorithm, the algorithm may fail with high probability. Then what is the use of that one? Okay. So, first you will be analyzing the high probability or the probability of success of the algorithm. Then the next one is the running time. Correct. Already I mentioned that for the same input when you run the algorithm repeatedly with the different choices of random numbers the algorithm may produce different output. So, what about the running time? Is it a fixed one? No, it is a random variable. See when the algorithm is executed based on a sequence of random numbers in one execution it may skip some steps there. In another execution it may ex execute the same steps also. So, the running time is a random variable. So, for that random variable always you will be finding the expected running time, expectation of that random variable which is nothing but the expected running time of the algorithm. Okay. So, in the analysis if the algorithm is correct you will be going for the expected running time. If the algorithm produces wrong answers we will be analyzing the success probability that is the probability with which the algorithm produces the correct answer. Are you able to follow this one? So, based on this one the randomized algorithms are classified into two groups Las Vegas algorithms and Monte Carlo algorithms. Okay. So, Las Vegas what is the difference? In Las Vegas there is no gambling with the correctness of the algorithm that means it produces the correct answer always. Okay. So, the running time is a random variable we will be analyzing the expected running time of the algorithm. Okay. But Monte Carlo algorithm may or may not produce the correct answer that is there we will be gambling with the correctness of the algorithm. So, it may or may not produce the correct answer we have to analyze the probability of success. Then in this case the running time is a bounded one, we will allow the algorithm to execute all steps and finally find out whether it gives a correct answer or not. So, running time is not a random variable, we will be finding the worst case running time for that type of algorithms. Okay. So, along with the input we have to give a stream of random numbers as additional input. Okay. So, how to generate these random numbers? How do you generate to two, uh, true random numbers? If you flip a coin, you can generate 0 or 1. Am I correct? It the, if the coin is unbiased, they are true random numbers. If you throw a die, you can generate the numbers from 1 to 6, any one of the number in the range 1 comma 6, correct? But when you consider algorithms, you have to implement it. Okay? When you implement it, how do you implement coin flip and throwing a die? It is not possible. So, we stick on to random numbers generated by some algorithms. That is using some formula, the algorithms will generate some random numbers. It is not truly random. Okay. Since it uses some formula to generate the numbers, it is not truly random. If you know the formula, you can predict the numbers, correct? That is the reason it is not truly random, okay? These type of numbers are called pseudo random numbers. Are you able to understand the difference? It is not truly random, it behaves like a random number, correct? Statistical behavior of that numbers is like random numbers behavior, okay? So, pseudo random number is a determinist generator is a deterministic algorithm which produces numbers that appears statistically random. Okay. But whether pseudo random numbers are always useful? Pseudo random num generator if you know the formula you can predict the numbers, correct? So, for cryptographic applications, for security applications, if you are able to predict the numbers then you can run the algorithm and predict give the output also correct. So, for that type of applications normal pseudo random numbers are not preferable. Okay. 
there are lot of different <coughs> algorithms to do that one. Now, let us see one best algorithm for generating this pseudo random numbers which is called the linear congruential generator. The formula is nth random number r n equal to a into n minus 1 to random number r n minus 1 plus b mod m okay? where a and b are large prime numbers and m is either 2 power 32 or 2 power 64. So, when you start to run the algorithm you have to give some initial value for r that is called the seed value of the algorithm. Now, you please work out and tell me this one. For example, m equal to 8, a equal to 3, b equal to 2, the seed value r naught equal to 1, you find the sequence. You are getting the sequence as 5151, correct? Is it a good generator now? No, your m value is 8. If it is a good generator, it should generate all the numbers in the range 0 to 7, correct? Uniformly it has to generate. What about the period of this sequence? 2, it is not 7 or 8, correct? So, it is not a good random generator. So, the formula is really good. Then when you consider the choice of the parameters there, you have to be very careful. So, to get the period as m for all seed values, there is a theorem by Hull Dobal which states that when b not equal to 0, the period will be m for all seed values if the parameters <coughs> satisfies the conditions m and b are relatively prime, a minus 1 is divisible by all prime factors of m a minus 1 is divisible by 4 if m is divisible by 4. If you can choose these parameters properly, then this algorithm will generate all the integers in the range 0 to m, correct? In uh, following a uniform distribution. Okay. But we are not going to discuss much about this one. Now, there are lot of research in this domain and using some devices to generate to truly random numbers like lava lamps etc. There are some research work, if you are interested in that one you can refer these two links. So, next we will move to global min cut problem. So, in a multi graph a cut set is a set of edges whose removal disconnects the graph. Okay. So, we are going to dip, stick on to unweighted multi graphs. Global minimum cut or min cut is a cut with the least number of edges or in other words, a cut is a partition of the vertex set into two sets S and T and the if the edge number of edges between the two blocks of the partition is minimum then it is called a min cut. Okay. This is an example graph. Okay. What is the size of the min cut? 2. If you remove these two edges, you can disconnect the graph and this is the size of the min cut, it is 2. Okay. Now, you have learned ST min cut algorithm, am I correct? Max flow min cut. What are the algorithms you have learned? Ford Fulkerson, Edmund Harps algorithm. Okay. Can you make use of that idea to find the min cut or the global min cut in a given unweighted uh, undirected graph. Can you make use of that ST min cut idea, correct? To find the global min cut or to solve the global min cut problem in the given graph. If it is yes, how do you use it? Yeah, instead of see considering that one as the weight, we can consider it as a weighted graph by adding the weight 1 to each and every edge, correct? It is an unweighted uh, graph. Now, it is very simple, take one vertex as S, correct? Then choose one of the remaining vertex as T, then find out the ST cut, okay? Repeat this one, how many times? For all T values, 
correct. So, n minus 1 times I have to repeat this algorithm and choose the minimum cut among this. Okay. What about the computational complexity? If you do this one. <coughs> n minus 1 iterations you have to do, correct? I am fixing one vertex as s and choosing any one of the remaining vertex as t, then repeat the same algorithm s t min cut algorithm n minus 1 times for various values of t, correct? So, the computational complexity of the algorithm is going to be order of n into t, where t is the computational complexity of that max flow min cut algorithm, okay? If you use Edmund Hart's algorithm, what will be the computational complexity? See undirected graph, you can make it as a directed graph by replacing each edge by two directed edges. In simple terms, it is order of n cube. Okay. Then when you multiply it by n, you need order of <coughs> see order of n m square time is needed if you the best implementation can give you order of n cube time. Okay. So, if I multiply it by r n if I use the idea of that st min cut algorithm you can find the or solve the global min cut problem in order of n power 4 time. Okay. Then without using the max flow min cut algorithm there is a nice algorithm by Storer and Frank Wagner which needs order of m n plus n square log n time. Okay. For this global min cut problem, there is an algorithm by Storer and Frank Wagner which needs only order of m n plus n square log n. Now, let us introduce a little bit of randomization to solve this problem. This is actually a very elegant algorithm by Karger in 1993. So, this basic idea of this al algorithm is edge contraction. Okay. In contracting an edge of the graph, you will be merging the two end vertices, then delete the edges between the two end vertices, then the resulting graph is denoted by g contracted that notation u comma v. It can have parallel edges since you have deleted the edges between the end points there will not be any self loop. Okay. So, in the basic idea of Karger's min cut algorithm is you repeat this edge contraction until you are left with left out with only two vertices. Then the algorithm will give the size of the min cut as the number of edges between the two vertices very simple algorithm. Okay. We will see the algorithm input is the graph g which is equal to v comma e we are assuming that it is an undirected unweighted graph n is the number of vertices in the graph a very simple for loop for i equal to n to 2 we will be starting with n vertices and ending with the two vertices in step minus 1 correct n then n minus 1 like that pick a random edge there comes the randomness okay from the graph you pick a random edge E, contract that edge and the graph is the now the current graph is the contracted graph. Finally, after completing that for loop you return the cut in the final graph. Okay. Very simple algorithm, easy to implement also. Let us see some examples. See this is the input graph. First you contract the green edge B comma D. What is to be done? Merge the two vertices B and D, remove that green edge okay. <coughs> B comma D it is merged as a single node okay. that green edge is removed then what happens? This yellow edge B is having one end at B. Okay, so, B the same thing here and D is having one end point at D. So, D E. So, this is the contracted graph. All of you please try to draw that one and do. Then only easily you can understand. If you are already familiar with this one you can leave. 
Next you contract randomly I am selecting the yellow edge which is B comma E, you contract the edge, one more selection, contract the red edge there C comma D. Now you are having only two vertices, one vertex is A, another one is B E C D. Is it a cut? The graph is there you can check. If I remove these three edges, this blue, purple and black edge, you will get the singleton vertex A as one component, the remaining as another component, that is the output here. Okay. So, the size of the min cut by running this algorithm is 3, is it a correct answer? No, what is the size of the min cut in this simple graph? Only 2. Oh my god, it failed. Shall you try with some other choice of random numbers and check our luck whether you are able to get it or not? The same graph, you please do this one. You contract the green edge first, then the purple edge and then the blue edge. First you contract the edge B comma D then you contract the purple edge which is A comma D and then the blue edge A comma C over what is the answer? Min cut size is 2. See. And this is the final graph and you are able to get the min cut size as 2. So, it is a success now. Now, see you have seen two runs of the algorithm, correct? First run with one set of random choices, second run with another set of random choices. One run of the algorithm is giving you a wrong answer, and the second run is giving you the correct answer. What is the reason behind it? See, in the first run, we have contracted one min cut edge, am I correct? That is, we have contracted that yellow edge. Okay. If you run the algorithm without contracting any of the min cut edges till the end, you will get the correct answer. Okay. So, next we can do the analysis. So, Karger's min cut algorithm, some illustration of Karger's min cut algorithm over. So, it is a Monte Carlo algorithm, correct? Always it need not produce the correct answer. So, we will do the worst case analysis or the worst case running time of this algorithm. What is the time needed for edge contraction? It is given as order of n, how? That is see, can you explain it in terms of the changes in the data structure? See you are going to implement the algorithm, when you implement you have to represent the graph as a data structure, either you will be using an adjacency matrix or an adjacency list. What changes you have to do when you contract an edge in the data structure? Easily you can understand the time complexity from that one itself. I okay. will give you a very simple example. You consider this graph and contract the edge A B. Okay. When I contract the edge A B, A comma B as a single node, A D and this one D E, this edge is contracted, am I correct? Now see if we use the adjacency matrix as the data structure to represent the graph, this is the adjacency matrix for this graph, A to B 1, A to C 0, A to D 1, B to A 1 0, then B to C 1, B to D 0. C to A 0, C to B 1, C to C 0, C to D 1, D to A 1, D to B 0, D to C 1, 0. Am I correct? This is the adjacency matrix representation of this graph. Okay. Now, when I contract this two nodes, sorry, this edge A B, the two vertices A and B are merged. Okay. The changes should be reflected in the data structure. So, adjacency matrix for this graph if you consider what I have to do, can you tell me? Add 
the two rows corresponding to the vertices A and B. Similarly, add the two columns since it is a symmetric matrix, add the two columns corresponding to A and B, correct. Then when you add some of the diagonal entries may become 1, correct. So, replace all the diagonal entries by 0. So, what is the final adjacency matrix? I will be adding these two columns, correct. So, 1, 1, 1, 1, correct. Similarly, you have to add these two rows. So, here already 1, 1, 1, 1, correct. Then the remaining, see, after adding, I will be deleting this one, am I correct? Or replace it by zeros. the column and this one also by 0, 1 0 0 1, 1 0 1 0 correct and replace all the diagonal entries by 0 because there is no self loop ok. So, here one row second row full of zeros and second column full of zeros that is actually two vertices are merged there correct. Now, what is the work done? I am adding two columns. What is the time needed for that? Order of n. If there is a, there are n vertices, adjacency matrix is an n cross n vertex sorry graph matrix. So, you will be adding two columns in order of n time. Similarly, adding two rows in order of n time correct. Then replacing the diagonal entries by zeros in order of n time correct. So, total time needed is order of n for edge contraction, correct. Now, what about that Carger's min cut algorithm? How many times it runs? It is a for loop, simple for loop, for n equal to i equal to n to 2. So, n minus 2 runs, correct, or n minus 2 iterations. Therefore, the time complexity of Carger's min cut algorithm is order of n square, I will write it here itself. 